So here it is, May in Iowa, early spring, and I'm wearing a jacket. And I'm here to tell you, it's a little cool out, but I think it's going to warm up nicely. Anybody that knows me knows that I, I'm a catch and release guy, so I hardly ever keep any fish. Well, a couple weeks back, we were filming a segment for Sturgeon, and my good buddy Gary Brown says, Hey, don't throw those back, keep them. I said, well, what do you mean? You know, I don't really, you know, keep fish. He says, have you ever tried fried sturgeon? I said, no, all I ever had it was smoked. He said, tell you what, keep some. Next time, bring them into the shop. We'll clean them and we'll fry up some sturgeon. So that's what we're out to do. We're out to catch some sturgeon and we'll take it back to my good buddy Gary Brown in Sicilian and we'll fry them up. So let's get going. water temp about uh, 58 degrees hovering around we've had a lot of rain lately man really been a screwed up spring but cedars kind of high it's on its way down it's dropping but that's just one of the things we have to deal with when we're fishermen <laughs> positioned myself right between the island and the land so we got a lot of current coming through here and we're sitting in eh, 13 foot of water so we got a nice deep hole we got a lot of water funneling through here and remember these sturgeon they are built for the current <laughs> Now, fishing for sturgeon is really no different than fishing for catfish, how how you'd normally fish for catfish. It's basically the same type of setup, and I'll show you what we got going on here. Now, <clears throat> this is what they call a Carolina rig. Now, how this works is you have a no roll or an egg sinker. Now, being that we're out here on the cedar, the current's a little bit faster, so I prefer like a three ounce no roll. I really like these that are not going to roll around in the current and get all tangled up. Next thing I have is a little bead. Okay, what this bead does is it acts like a cushion or a bumper between the next piece, which is your standard swivel. So when this weight comes down there, when you're casting it out or you're fighting it, your bottom of your lead isn't beating up against your knot on your swivel. Then we just come off with a uh, leader, which this is just some heavy, probably 15 pound monofilament. And then your standard number two bait holder hook. What I like about this rig is because when it lays on the bottom of the river like this, your bait's gonna want to tend to float up in the air like that a little bit, give them something to grab onto because sturgeon are primarily bottom feeders. So with that, when they come up to nibble on that, they're not gonna feel that weight. This is gonna slide through. And that's called the Carolina rig and it works beautiful in these kinds of situations. When it comes to bait choice, it's pretty simple. Just your old standard run of the mill night crawler. No special sturgeon spray, no special sturgeon strips, anything like that. Just a standard old night crawler. Now the way I like to hook them up is I come through the top of it Kind of get him threaded on the hook in a straight line. Pierce him back through. I'm going to slide him up over the eye just a little bit. And then I'm going to take the back part of the worm and I'm going to end up hooking him once right through the body. That way when it hangs, it hangs there in a straight line. Now in the water, this is going to look like a big piece of spaghetti and them sturgeon are going to come up and just slurp it up. They love it. So I got my line set out. I'm ready to go. The worm's going to do the work. So now all we got to do is sit back and wait for the action to happen. Hey 
and there we go a sturgeon these things are like a cross between a dinosaur settle down a dinosaur and a stealth bomber that's why these things are made for current hacklebacks they call them hacklebacks sometimes but they're just like a, a, a kickback to prehistoric age like i said their mouth is on the bottom their bottom feeder look how it's shovel nose uh, they're built like i said these guys are streamlined they're built for the current one down five more to go Let's see what do i do with my stringer you know what it's kind of awesome that i own a bait shop because sometimes if i look in my pocket that um i have something cool <laughs> head down and just really use that current to their advantage. See that blue line that comes through there? There was a question a while ago, I was like, what, what's that blue line? And so nobody's taking a magic marker and marking these fish. <laughs> Anybody with any kind of experience will tell you the cedar is notorious for gobbling up tackle. Now, when it comes to the hooks and the leaders, yeah, I could get some mono and tie them all up and stuff like that. But really, an affordable option are these eagle claws. Now, these are size ones and they've already got the leader attached they're already schnelled and it's just perfect for situations like this they're neatly packaged you pull them out you're good to go especially on a high consumption river like the cedar now i was talking earlier about the weights right here what we have is a, is a three ounce no rolls now these come anywhere from six ounce to five ounce to four yada 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 all the way down I really like these and that's why I carry these in my shop at Jerry's Bait and Tackle is these work great because they're going to lay on the bottom. They're not going to roll around like an egg sinker and get all twisted up. These work fantastic. When it comes to the swivels, here again I'm going with Eagle Claw because I find them to be the most affordable that's out there. Uh, like I said with the cedar, it's a high consumption man, it'll eat up a lot of tackle if you're not careful. Uh, what I like about these are the barrel swivels with the safety snap, easy to attach to your line and get back to the task at hand. There's one. Yes. A little bigger. So it's midday and I've switched locations. I'm actually sitting right on top of a sandbar and it goes out kind of gently goes down and I got one ticking on it right here let's see what we got Ow, I think I just pulled it out of his mouth and I did but we'll cast it right back out because they are in here Two more, two worms left. Did I miss him by jacking around with the camera? I'm down to one worm. Got him. Ah, gotcha. Last little bit of night crawler I got. Oh, please don't be a catfish or a perch. Gary's gonna be disappointed if I only bring five, but that's the way it goes. And I caught them all out of this side of the boat today. I don't know what that means. Ow! Oh. 
<laughs> well, that's the way it goes. A sucker born every minute. There's nothing healthy though. That's good. Well, it looks like only four sturgeon for Gary Brown. But we came out and had a good time. That's the Cedar River. Let's go to Gary's and see how we prepare this sturgeon. Here we go. What you asked for, fresh fish delivery and a hatchet. Well, let's go clean them up. <laughs> let's go clean them. Never had fried sturgeon. We'll see. Now, I have to admit, I've had smoked sturgeon hundreds of times. But when you said, get some, bring them in, and we're going to fry it up, how often have you ate fried sturgeon? Oh, I eat it a lot. It's good. It's, that it's good. the best way to eat it. Oh, yeah? Well, I'm gonna trust you on this one. So <laughs> we've got we got fresh sturgeon here. I mean, couldn't get any fresher. You know, if I was here a couple hours ago, it might have been a little bit fresher, but they're <laughs> totally fresh. Just caught today. Oh, well, it's not stiff. It's okay. Not not stiff. Not <laughs> stiff at all. So explain to me what the procedure is, because you asked me to give you a hatchet. Now I've cleaned a lot of fish, but I've never used a hatchet. All right. Well, we got to take the head off. Tail off, chop her into pieces. And then we peel her right out of her shell. Just like sushi. Just like that. Yeah, it helps to be a sushi chef. chef. <laughs> it does. And, it really and does. a samurai guy. And a samurai and a lumberjack. <laughs> you don't get much meat, but mm -hmm. the meat you do get is delicious. Mm -hmm. and this is something I did a lot of times with my grandpa. Mm -hmm. Oh, the brown fish market fame. That's why he knows us. He knows more than just pizza. He knows fish. <laughs> well, you said as a little kid you had to help help clean a lot. Oh, yeah. He gave me a job. He's always had me something to do, making money. I never had to have a paper route. I was always in the fish market. Uh-huh. And I'm not cutting around the bone. Mm -hmm. It's not a bone. It's a gristle. There's no bone in sturgeon. There's no bone in sturgeon. No, no. Being a fish expert you are, what is that blue line running through there? That's his intestines. That's his intestines. It's not eggs. It's where he poops. It's where he poops. <laughs> but that's not eggs. No. Nope. Actually, the eggs in these are like caviar. They're like caviar. And they go for like a hundred dollars a pound. So we've got all males here then. I think so. I really mm -hmm. don't know how to tell mm -hmm. until you cut them open and see if they have eggs or not. Okay. No eggs. No eggs. No eggs. I'm not so sure if they're spawning yet or not. I think that comes a little toward, more towards June. Right. Into May. Yep. So. There you go. It's not eggs, it's intestines. Okay, when it comes to prep, is there anything out of the ordinary we need to do for sturgeon? No. You just use my special, Your special, my blend? special blend. We have our fish, we have our farm fresh eggs. Farm fresh. Farm fresh. Free grazed chickens. There you go. Play this baby babies. Then you have my special bread. Your special bread. This bread is what makes it all good. Only available here at the Sicilian Only Pizzeria in here. Yep. But you can buy the recipe for ten thousand dollars. <laughs> so over here, my special breading. Mix it all around. Make sure 
sure you get plenty of burning on every one of them. You're really working it in now. Yeah, I got to get it in there. And now, the Gary Brown patented release into the grease. Okay, <laughs> now it's all ready and ready to go into the grease. About three to four minutes, you can have some tasty morsels. We got the finished product now. I've never, I've never tried fried sturgeon before. I lied while I was waiting to film this. I had three or four pieces. <laughs> so I had to add, no, man. Damn, dude, that's fantastic. That's really good, ain't it? Oh, really, really good. It's got a different texture to the meat. Felt a little bit like a wall. A little bit. But not as cooked. Beautifully seasoned well. <coughs> oh, dude, I've never thrown sturgeon back again. <laughs> I have never thrown sturgeon back again. Well, bring me some more, and I'll smoke you some too. There you go. So there you go. Fried sturgeon on Jerry's outdoor show. My good friend Gary Brown of the Sicilian Pizzeria and the Brown Fish Market fame. Fried sturgeon, man. Who knew? What do you do? Know? Been eating for years all there my you life. Go. Excellent.